everybody, it's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. A couple of years ago, I had the uh, unique opportunity to arrive in Berlin at the main tra train station that you see here on an ice train and spend two and a half weeks alone in the city. An absolute uh, treat for me, uh, it just fell into place. And uh, arriving at the uh, Hauptbahnhof in uh, Berlin was an experience. Uh, this train station handles 300,000 people a day in an absolute symphony of coordination. Uh, it is so well designed. Uh, it's an amazing place. Uh, you can shop there, you can eat there, you can, of course, come and go from there. All manner of trains uh, service this train station, uh, whether you're driving or taking a train to uh, France or Italy, or whether you're just uh, taking a subway in town, or like me, you're grabbing a tram. And uh, coming out of the back of the station, I grabbed this tram right here, knowing that I needed to get to Alexanderplatz, which was in what was known as East Berlin in the old days, before 1989. And, uh, uh, I was able to spend two and a half weeks in an apartment that my daughter uh, was renting and uh, one of the buildings looks like this. Uh, they're about nine, ten stories high. These were built by the East German government uh, from the 50s until the late 80s. And the building that I was in had this view from the living room window. Could look at the TV tower and see uh, the Park Inn Hotel over there. This is right at Alexanderplatz. And, uh, I really found this to be a treat. Uh, I ended up two and a half weeks in Berlin without a car and I didn't need one. Um, they left me a bike to drive uh, and I, that was all I needed for, for my own getting around. Plus, of course, I had the ability to use transit. And I've got a shot here of uh, me walking out of the apartment building on a sunny day here in late September. This is uh, right at the end of September. This is the back of the unit uh, that I was staying in, the building itself. You can see they're all about the same height. These buildings were built on mass uh, uh, with a prefab uh, concrete type uh, structure or, or method. They went up pretty quickly. The East German government was in a race to keep housing affordable and available for its citizenry. And a lot of East Berlin had these types of units. Today, these buildings are now privately owned. They're all condos. Everybody has their own uh, balcony and uh, they grow flowers or whatever they wish. Not much in the way of parking though for vehicles because in the days of East Berlin, uh, East Berliners uh, would have to wait 20 years or longer to be able to get a car. <laughs> and there was only one model of car available, the Trabant, which was I think a three cylinder banger. If you ever got one with a fiber fiberglass type body, they were crap. Uh, very few places to park, but then again, you didn't need very many places to park in those days. Today, of course, parking is at a premium. This, of course, is shot uh, just a few years ago here in the two th in around 2015-16, and so you can see here, um, modern-day vehicles, no trabants anywhere. Um, to get around Berlin, a motorbike will do, a small car if you need one, but really, 90% um, of the people around here, or maybe that, that high number, walk and take the tramway. Um, I went grocery shopping right over here at the bottom of this building. I'm just going to zoom in on it right there. That's a grocery store on the bottom of that entire apartment block. That's the size of a typical Safeway grocery store in North America. And right in there, you take your empties. Uh, you walk in there with a couple of bags of your empties every couple of days. Put them in a little machine. You get a receipt. Shop for anything you want. Hot prepared food, uh, groceries, uh, alcohol, everything in one location. Use the receipt uh, against the purchase price from your empties, pay the rest. And uh, how about convenience? A little walk away and uh, you buy groceries for two or three days at a time. That's all you do. And then you walk at home. It's so easy. Um, every little area around East Berlin is exactly like this with all these different buildings. There's a grocery store always within a couple of minutes walk from where you live. It's absolutely wonderful. You see the TV tower there in the distance, that is Alexanderplatz there. And uh, that uh, station uh, can handle um, hundreds of thousands of passengers as well. Uh, you can go anywhere in Europe from that station, uh, not just locally. Uh, but uh, here I'm walking along the main, uh, the, one of the main streets here from uh, uh, the old East Berlin days. The tram line is in the middle of the boulevard here, it's very wide. Uh, typical design, a sort of a Russian um, 1950s uh, way of doing things. Uh, again, this was run by the, uh, the Communist Party uh, back in the uh, right from the after the war until 1989, 
And today, um, it's beautiful for, for those of us who uh, have never been here before. It's, it's stunning to see how wide open this is and how roomy this is. When you think about Europe, you think about a claustroph claustrophobic kind of uh, neighborhoods with narrow streets and that kind of thing. But here in, the, in what was East Berlin, uh, they uh, really built these huge boulevards, these main streets. And in the middle, they had the tram lines. Now, this, this roadway is so wide that I couldn't walk fast enough to make the light. I had to stop on an island right where the tram line was because otherwise I was going through a red light. And you can just see behind me how far I've walked already. And um, over here, you'll see shortly, or here we go, there's the tram uh, uh, lines right there in the middle of the boulevard. Uh, so back in the early days, in the East German days, this was the way you got around. You either biked or you took, uh, you took transit uh, or you walked. Um, very few people had the opportunity to grab a car. Now here I am uh, I'm moving in now to uh, Alexanderplatz. Uh, I hung out here for, for an hour or so one day just to get a feel for the local uh, lay of the land. I zoomed in on the bottom of the TV tower and then I zoomed out. There's the Galleria uh, department store chain. And uh, there is, uh, in the distance, that is the uh, Alexanderplatz uh, station for subways, rail, regional rail, um, you name it, and trams on the outside, and buses. Uh, but here we have Oktoberfest. This is uh, September in Berlin. Folks are coming in to grab some bratwursts and some beer and uh, to enjoy themselves. Uh, this is uh, typical every year uh, in Berlin, and in the wintertime, these little stalls turn into winter Christmas stalls with all the Christmas lights. Here uh, I did the tourist thing. I came to the Brandenburg Gate area, and uh, even in late September, October, the flowers are still in bloom. Absolutely beautiful. I believe this building um, is one of the embassies. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which one it was. There's the Brandenburg Gate there. Uh, iconic, it's been photographed a zillion times. I am in East Germany at the moment, so I could never have stood here in 1985 or 1980 or even 1988. Could never have been able to stand here. This is on the East German side. West Germany is on the other side of that gate. That's where Reagan was on the other side of the gate saying, tear down this wall. Over here, the white building you see there, that is the U.S. Embassy. It is a primo real estate right at the Brandenburg Gate, right on the East German side is where America decided to put its embassy to make a point that it will never revert back to the communist side again. The Soviets uh, backed off and allowed East Germany to go its own way. East Germany joined with West Germany. Now it's all unified. That's the Hotel uh, Adlon, a historic uh, hotel from, from probably the 1800s. And uh, embassies go all the way up this street. Uh, the Soviet embassy is up about a half a mile. Cranes in the distance there. Berlin is always under construction. Uh, a lot of construction going on and a lot of tourism. This is definitely a tourist area. You see some of the double-decker buses in the distance tooling uh, tourists around. The Berlin Wall. Not much of the Berlin Wall is left standing. Most of it was hacked down by uh, <laughs> jubilant Germans who wanted that thing gone. Uh, today, uh, what's left of the wall is actually protected. Uh, it's now a crime to chip any of this wall off. Uh, you get caught, you're in trouble. Uh, their German government now actually wants to preserve what's left because they realize the tourism factor is unbelievable. And so uh, there are a few sections of the city where the Berlin, the Berlin Wall stands and a lot of tourists visit it and get their photos taken beside it and uh, check it out to see uh, what it looked like. But around the wall where the death strip used to be, gone. Uh, virtually nothing left of what it used to look like with the desolate uh, land in between the uh, outer wall and the inner wall and the guard towers. By the way, when in Berlin, you must eat. And uh, Stitzel night is Monday night at the local restaurant where I was staying. Uh, you gotta love it. Uh, here's <laughs> your typical food you're gonna get if you go to a typical German restaurant. Pretty nice. If you want a McDonald's or a Burger King, yeah, they got those. But why, why, why would you do that? Uh, here I am in, inside an old covered bridge, a uh, 700-year-old bridge, and uh, took a photo back at the TV tower. This here is um, Stalin Ali, or Karl Marx Ali, I think they call it. Um, and I, uh, I knew wherever I, uh, wherever I was in the city, I could figure it out as long as I could see where the tower was, where the TV tower was. It's 110 stories tall, right up at the tip there. So I, I knew if I could see it, I knew where in relation to I was staying I was at, at the time. 
and so I took a lot of photos of it. The, the Berlin uh, that you and I see on television is completely different than the Berlin that actually exists. Um, you know, we've seen spy movies and, uh, you know, we've seen war movies and then of course we've seen all the footage from the Second World War and all the glorified destruction of the city and all that nonsense. Today's Berlin is a beautiful place. There are many, many parks. It's extremely people friendly. Um, this is a this is a city where you can take wonderful, calm, easy walks. It's a city where you can take bike rides. Um, uh, it is really a people place. And uh, this is just a park that's barely half a mile from where my apartment was. And uh, in this park is a hill that is probably 15 stories tall. And the hill is huge. It's a, it's a kind of hill you can jog up or, or walk up or, or bike up. But uh, the reality is that that hill is actually the ruins of a big part of Berlin that were cleaned up after the war and piled on top of, a, of an exploded air, um, uh, air defense bunker that was built during the Second World War. Today, it's covered in trees, grass, shrubbery. It's gorgeous. Most people don't even know that uh, this park actually had to be uh, commandeered by uh, the East Germans to hide all the ruins from the bombed out buildings. Uh, you don't see any of it at all. It's an absolutely beautiful place with fountains and beer gardens and little ponds where the ducks enjoy themselves. Anyway, this is Bruce with Chopping with Bruce. I'm um, leaving you with my impressions of Berlin. What a beautiful place right in the middle of a city of five odd million people. You have this. And join me Monday to Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We talk cruise ships and traveling six days a week. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like the video, subscribe to my channel. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.